Hello there, everyone. My name is Crazy Caleb, and today we're going to be taking a look at a series of other more easy modules today. So, what we're going to be going over is we're going to be going over a series of different modules. So, we have, um, now, as you can tell by that little giggle that you hear on here, this means that we're working with an imposter. So, uh, this module will look similar to another module, but do not be fooled. This module will have a quirk that will, that would normally not happen if the module were normal. Note that this module will play a giggle sound effect at some point near the very start of the bomb. Like so, we've heard two of them so far. That means we're working with two imposters. So, once you have identified that this module is trying to trick you, all we need to do is we need to simply hold on any selectable object for at least three seconds, and failure to do so will result in a strike, uh, followed by a flickering of what the quirk was, and then resolving the module shortly after. So, immediately right off the bat, this module actually requires you to know a little bit of modded at, uh, beforehand. So, it is important that you know how to actually do this module um, along with some others and how they look. For example, there can be this murder, for example, murder being um, one of the things here. So, if we actually happen to pop up murder, the normal murder, uh, keep in mind that there is the, also the potential of there being a uh, not modded module. So there, are, there is not murder present. There is also. Um, for example, not wire sword, uh, and a bunch of other mod not modded. Keep in mind that this is going to be completely different from the not modded modules. There will be a very significant difference. For example, this first one here, for murder. Taking a look at this first uh, at this first name at the top here, uh, we don't want to press anything just to be safe. Uh, immediately right off the bat, there is no Doctor Orchid present on the actual murder module. We have Scarlet, Plum, Peacock. Green, mustard, and white. No Dr. Orchid. So we know for a fact that this is the imposter. So all we simply need to do is we need to hold a button, hold a whole, um, hold a, uh, what was it say? Any selectable object for at least three seconds. And then we can simply let go once we hear a specific sound. So one, two, three. Hear that bum, bum. That means you're good to go. Likewise with this one, uh, immediately right off the bat, murder will always have the, um, it will, murder and not murder will always be the uh, the person, the weapon, and the room that they're in. However, in this case, the lead pipe is where the person would be, so the, and and the person is where the um, is where the weapons would be. So we know for a fact that this is going to be an imposter. And I want to pop up a couple more after this example, so we'll get back into that. Um, so we're going to simply hold the cues. and we're good to go. So that's imposter for you. Next up, let's take a look at working title. This module is another easy, another very, very easy one. Uh, that's not it. That's wire ordering. That's a module of its own. <laughs> so what it wants us to do is it will have a screen display here. And uh, no, this is actually just the way that the module will look. It's not currently in progress. It's simply working title. So this module will have a screen and three buttons labeled uh, button A, B, and C. And we need to press the right buttons according to the table below. So all we need to do is simply need to look up the per the the um, the label that's in the top here, and we need to simply press the button accordingly. So we're looking at Foo right now. Foo is, is going to be right here, and it's going to be press the button, uh, press, the bu press the button labeled A, if the screen, on, if, if the phrase on the screen is in the table below, likewise with B, and likewise with C. That's the way this module works. So we're going to be pressing A, solve the module, solve text. Now taking a look here, we have SHME. SHME is going to be down here, which is going to be in the button labeled Bravo. So, and just like that, we're good to go. Uh, next up, let's take a look at press the shape. So, press the shape is actually pretty simple. We only have three different uh, shapes here. We have the triangle, square, and circle. And what this module asks you to do is actually give you a series of different, um, really obscure edge work conditions. Uh, it's it's a very easy module, but it's very important that you read the actual edge work conditions very carefully. Um, and simply what we're going to do is we're going to read the table from left to right, and applying the first condition that applies, and we're simply going to use the one that's in the same column. So, uh, use this if there are more than two batteries and a serial port is present. Uh, we do have more than two batteries present on the bottom we have up here. Uh, however, we do not have a serial port, so that's not going to be true. Otherwise, use this column if there is a lit TRN or Bob, or unlit mic SA or NSA. We have a lit SIG, which does not correspond to any of those indicators, so this rule does not apply. Otherwise, use this column if there are fewer than four batteries, which is already false, 
and a bob is not present. If a bob is not present, however, we do not have fewer than four batteries. We currently have five. Otherwise, use this common if there are no lit indicators and a PS2 or RJ45 port are present. Or excuse me, uh, if there is no lit indicators and a PS2 or RJ45 port is present. So we actually do have a lit indicator, uh, and we don't have any of those ports present. So what this really means is we're going to be using this column triangle. Now, we press the triangle, and that's good to go. Now, in most cases, it, this module is going to end up giving you the answer of triangle, just because of how obscure and how rare these rules actually are that apply. Um, so just keep that in mind. However, it is a very simple module to do, and it's nothing that nothing that no one can do. So let's take a look at another one. Let's go over on to Shogi identification. Now, Shogi identification is a very easy concept. However, it is a little bit tricky to describe the actual symbols in the middle here. So what our goal is, is to identify which um, which piece this character is and which, uh, which uh, movements they can capture from. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to identify the piece from the character and imagine the piece is being placed in the middle of the 5x5 five five grid. And we're going to press all the squares which you can capture. Uh, which is referring to these little red squares. Now, of course, uh, pr uh, pressing pressing all squares, uh, which you can capture, is of course necessary. However, pressing the center square is optional. So we're going to be pressing all of these guys, and of course we can simply press the middle one, however that's not necessary. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and describe these symbols here, and that's all we're going to do. So this one, taking a look here, uh, this one has... Um, on the top part of it, it almost has like two lemas that are essentially getting greater. The lemas, the end of it, the bottom right of it, is going to be sort of like a triangle, and that's the top half of it. And then on the bottom half, it's like a, almost like a Juliet, and then it's got a series of different Chinese strokes um, with a little, I guess like a horn, a big horn down at the bottom. The top part of it is sort of sticking out like a nub, and at this point, we would say that it looks like the pawn. So we, flip, flip, so we simply tap the screen to flip it over. And now what we need to do is we need to press the moves that it captured. There's no time uh, limit to this, so all we simply need to do is we need to press the center and the uh, top uh, and Charlie 2. And the module will flip over. Uh, it will light up green, and the module has been solved. Let's take a look at another one. This one is by far a lot simpler. Um, this is, uh, we have... Um, on the right side, there is going to be uh, there's two there's two different symbols by the way. On the right side, we have a a pull, and then in the middle of that, we have sort of like a square that's that's uh, on it. And on the left side, we have the same horn that we described from beforehand. Um, however, it's a little bit shorter and a, another pull. It almost be like a telescope. You could describe that uh, top part of it. So we look around and we find it. Um, and again, describing this is totally up to you. Um, ultimately, you guys can create, uh, create a system. There is no real like definitive way to, to say these. Now, uh, we have the go-between right here. So let's flip this guy over. And simply what, what we do, what we can do is we can actually not select the middle piece at all. We can simply just select Charlie 2 and Charlie 4. And it will still solve the module. All right, moving on to emoticon math. Let me pop it up. Emoticon math is a play off of emoji math. The original module being emoji math is also a very simple one. I would advise you to learn that one first, or you can just simply do this one eat, um, before two. Doesn't really matter to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to describe each of the emoji symbols here to create a, a little formula, um, which can be numbers or symbols here. So let's do that. So we have the uh, rock on hand symbol, which is going to be right here, which is a two. Uh, next up, we have a hot dog. Hot dog is also a two. Uh, we have the gaming symbol. Note that the third one will always be a uh, symbol to which you will do uh, addition, subtraction, or multiplication. So we're looking at the uh, Xbox controller, which is going to be a plus. So we're going to be doing 22 plus whatever symbol. Uh, we're doing the rock on again, so that's going to be a two. And we're doing the crying laughing uh, emoji, which is going to be a zero. So 22 plus 20, popping out our handy dandy calculator, you can do this in your head, that's going to be 22 plus 20, which is going to give us a 42. And just like that is a solved module. Taking a look at this one. Uh, this one, uh, he's got a laughing face, but his eyes are sort of like greater than and less than signs. 
which is a 7. Uh, then we have banana, which is hello blan, um, which is going to be another 7. The hammer, which is going to be our symbol for the, um, the uh, application that we're going to be using here, the hammer is going to be a subtraction. Note that the uh, that little mark on the actual manual is a little bit weird. You can simply hover over it like this, and it will be able to show you like that. So that is a minus sign, so we're going to do 77 minus what? We have the rock on symbol once again, which is a 2, and we have an apple. Apple represents a 8. So 77 minus 2, 8 is going to be a 49. 49, and just like that is a solved module. All right, we have one more module we need to show off, which is going to be a brawler database. Pop it up. There we go. Brawler database. So now, what our goal is, is we're going to essentially take a look at the current hero that we have on this display. And what we need to do is we need to figure out a couple of places where they have to be, uh, where they need to be restored. Uh, we have the name, home, attribute, and faction. And what we need to do is we need to figure out where the missing data is at. Which is going to be corresponding to these little buttons that are uh, that are that are glowing red, that are flashing, which means that we need to take care of this issue. So let's take a look here. The first thing first that we need to do is we need to describe this guy on the display. The display will never be borked, um, so let's take care of that. So let's look right here. Um, he's got like this dude looks pissed. He's got a giant beard and he's look he, he's very very tall. Um, his face is small, however, uh, so let's scroll down, and this is going to be corresponding to Nurzak. So this is the guy we're looking at, and all we simply need to do is we need to simply figure out which uh, what his name is, uh, and um, that should be good to go. So let's uh, take a look here. We can press over name, which is going to be what we're going to do, and note that the display in the bottom has stopped cycling that freaking, freakish mess that was doing beforehand. So that simply means that we can simply cycle uh, to get to the name. Note that that's going to be in the uh, order here of the picture of the brawler, the name of the brawler, the home of the brawler, the Bakugan attribute most often used, and the faction of the brawler, which happens to correspond to the exact order from uh, top to bottom over here to the order of which we need to use. So we have name, home, uh, attribute, and faction, name, home, attribute, faction. So it's the order of exactly which we need. Let's go back down to here. So now all we need to fix is the name. So all we need to do is we need to get the Nurzak. Go down to Nurzak, let's set it there. Nurzak, all right. Uh, Gondola and Subteria and Battle Brawlers. Everything is set to its place. All you simply need to do is set it and hit restore. Data restoration successful. Data restoration successful, and we're good to go. So let's do one more example. This module is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is simply describe the character and we'll be good to go. So now, in this case, we need to fix the name, the attribute, and the faction. There's quite a few more cases that we need to take care of, so let's take a look. So this is going to be a white-haired little kid. He's got, like, purple... He's got, he's got purple... Uh, he's got a black shirt with purple stripes on it, um, and he's got a... Um, he's, got, he's got purple and black shoes, uh, I guess boots almost, and uh, some gray pants, which is going to correspond to Ren. So the name is going to be Ren. So Ren... Set it to Ren. I missed it. We have to go all the way through the alphabet again, right? Uh, Ren. Okay. That's set. Attribute. Attribute is going to be a Darkus. Uh, Darkus. And the faction is going to be Battle Brawlers. Like so. so now that we have everything set to the correct uh, position, Data restoration successful. So that is a solved module. So I want to take a look at a couple more impostors just to give you some examples of which the. Um, the cases will be different. Hopefully it gives you a better idea of what you're actually looking at, for example. Um, because there are a couple cases of which you can get easily tripped up with. There can be letter keys, there can be wires, there can be... Um, what's some other ones that there could be? There could be co uh, Color Flash, for example. I think that's popped up once. Um, we, had, we had Murder beforehand, so there's a lot of different options. So I'm going to pop up a just an 11-module bomb just to give you some ideas of what Imposter looks like. So let's get rid of all this. 11 times imposter, and you'll be hearing a lot of giggles. That's the way that this module helps you uh, figure out if there actually is one on the bomb. So that should be good to go. Okay. We have quite a few different examples here. So uh, immediately with this one, color math, this is color math. 
there is no such faction. Uh, there is no such. Um, let him get him. Let's let it get out of the way. Let's let's let it take care of this thing. Um, come on now. You all done? You're not. I'll wait. <laughs> all right. So immediately right off the bat, uh, there is no such thing as a green tango. There's only um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division that can pop up here, or simply ASMD. Uh, there's no such um, uh, operation as tango, so this simply means that this is an imposter. Two, three. We're going to go. Like I said, silly slots. Um, silly slots, let's take a look at the actual manual for this one. Uh, silly slots uh, actually does not have the um, uh, red whale, so this is immediately off uh, the bat. The stuff that can appear is going to be a um, blue, red, green. Or, or a cherry, grape, bomb, and a coin. Those are the only four options that can appear in those three colors. There is no such thing as a bloody whale. So let's hit the um, let's interact with these buttons. So, and we're good to go. With microcontroller, microcontroller. One of the one of the big things with microcontroller is the. Let's pop it up here. Uh, there is supposed to be. Um, uh, not two LEDs lit up right here. That is one of the biggest things that you shouldn't be happening here, uh, is the fact that there are two LEDs here. Um, there should only be one LED with um, with a light on at the beginning. However, there are two, and I have not interacted with it, so I'm going to press this, and that's an imposter. Just keep in mind that you haven't interacted with the module, and if there happens to be two already in place, there is something wrong. Uh, like I was with Mystic Square, uh, one of the big things is that you're supposed to try and avoid the skull, and then and the skull actually never appears in the, um, actually I don't think any of the symbols actually appear in the actual um, beginning phase. So immediately right off the bat, you're already seeing the skull, which is already a red flag. So that's going to be impossible. Now, uh, going back to Silly Slots, Silly Slots is another one that's going to be a, a pretty uh, common one. Uh, the keywords. There is no such thing as sleepy. So we have sassy, silly, soggy, Sally, Simon, saucy, uh, sausage, and Steven. Note that sleepy is not one of those options. So that is definitely going to be a wrong. So we're going to hold that. Taking a look here over here. Uh, immediately right off the bat. Um, the uh, delete and OK buttons, word search and uh, word scramble are probably one of the more trickier ones to actually have um, have to do. Um, however, with word scramble, um, talking about the actual manual here, word scramble. Uh, word scramble, as you can see by the display on the actual module, uh, it wants you to have the delete and the OK button on the right side. Note that it will never be on the left side. There is no reason why this should actually happen, so this means that this is an imposter. I think it actually goes both ways for the, uh, the word scramble and the um, anagrams. Make sure of that. Yeah. Uh, anagrams and word scramble always want the uh, delete and OK buttons on the right side. There will never, they will never be on the left side. Let's just keep that in mind. Now, uh, next up with astrology, uh, there is two symbols here that are the exact same that would appear in the first position. So astrology here. So astrology wants you to have uh, one of these four symbols here and two of these symbols in these in this here. So. However, there is the down triangle and down triangle line. Both of these guys happen to appear, already meaning that this module does not make sense. So it's important to have uh, a bit of a better um, module knowledge uh, beforehand because there is a lot of modules that do have imposter. It's a lot of older variants, but there is still quite a bit that is very important to keep track of. So taking a look at creation, uh, there is no such thing as finesse that you begin with. So uh, you begin with these four options. You begin with the options of rain, wind, heat wave, and meteor shower. So heat wave is the one that is gone and has been replaced with finesse. So let's hold that. 
Now, switches is a little bit of a trickier one. Switches can sometimes be a little bit easy, um, or it can be a little bit tricky for those of you who know how to um, uh, solo it. And you don't know all the positions, but however, taking a look here, these positions are representing uh, illegal states of which the switch can be in. However, the module is already set to an illegal state, which is 1, 2, 3 up. This is an illegal state on the module, so this means that this module is an imposter. A little bit of a trickier one, sometimes it can give you the middle finger, I like to call that one the middle finger, uh, for, because it's just funny that way. And yeah, uh, and immediately right off the bat with this one, this one's actually a little bit of a trickier one that you wouldn't expect. Uh, this one is chess, and this one actually is going to be representing, there is the LEDs at the bottom are not lit. Because of the fact that it would be simply you would get the order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which would represent each of the chess pieces. It's not the chess piece that's wrong. It's simply the fact that the LEDs at the bottom are not lit. That's why that's wrong. Uh, and bitmaps. Bitmaps is pretty simple. As you can already tell, that kind of feels weird. That 5 right down there, it should be a 1, 2, 3, 4. It's always going to be this order. However, 5 does not exist. And just like that, is a solved module. As always, thank you guys for watching. Remember to stay crazy, stay cool, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye